Nothing quite like muffins. This is a great muffin recipe. And when you try it, well, you just may have a brand new recipe for your permanent file. <laughs> Today I'm making some muffins. This is another muffin recipe. I figured I would do a couple of different recipes for muffins. And in case you didn't get last week's video, I'm going to provide you with a fantastic muffin recipe here. This is a base recipe for muffins, and you get to use this recipe however you want to use it. Now what I mean by that is there's a lot of different kinds of muffins. Some people like cranberry muffins. Some people like banana muffins. Some people like apricot muffins. Some people like muffins with nuts. Some people want just plain Jane muffins or would like just a plain Jane muffin that's maybe spiced up a little bit, like a spice cake would be. You can do apple muffins. You can do any variety of muffin that you want to do. There's all kinds of fruit and nuts and all kinds of neat things that you can just drop down in muffins. Hey, how about butterscotch chips? Or maybe some uh, chocolate chips. There's you, a different one. Muffins. Guys, this is a wonderful recipe and it needs to be set. In the development of a good muffin recipe, you should be able to have one single recipe, which is your base muffin recipe. It's the dry ingredients and the wet ingredients and the right acid balance all coming together into a base mixture that you can then toss whatever extras you want into. So folks, today it's muffins. It's not hard to do. This is easy. Let's get in the kitchen and get busy cooking these goodies up. Come on, let's do it. The ingredients for today's recipe, flour, sugar, baking powder, salt, milk, sour cream, egg. There was one item I left out on the ingredients list. The butter. You gotta have butter in order to make a really good muffin. Now some people might say, no, you can do it with oil. Just put a quarter cup of oil in there, it's gonna be okay. Some people say you can make it without it. We need flavor and we need fat content. The fat content keeps, keeps it moist, right? It helps retain moisture in the muffin, important. And the second thing is, is who doesn't like butter in their muffins? Come on, this is <laughs> pretty simple, isn't it? Okay, this is a third of a cup of butter. I'm about to melt it and I'll pour it melted into my liquid for my batter recipe. And over here on the side, I have a few extra ingredients. I have some almonds and I have some cranberries here. These are dried cranberries. And I have some Cointreau and I'm going to soak these with some of this before making this recipe. You can put anything you want in there, fix it up however you like. That's how I'm doing mine today. Before we get started up making this recipe, I wanted to have a little discussion about gas. Now, I'm not talking about the kind of gas that you get when you eat the wrong foods. I'm talking about the kind of gas that we use that causes bread to rise, that makes our muffins fluffy, that gives us special characteristics in certain foods. Some gas is made with yeast, this stuff here, okay? Some gas is made with baking soda. Some gas is made with baking powder. So what's the difference? Folks, I wanted to take just a moment on this tutorial to talk to you about what leavening is. Leavening is when you cause something to rise, okay? The leavening itself is the item that makes it rise. Some leavenings are chemical, like baking soda. When you mix baking soda with acid, what does it do? It foams up, it creates carbon dioxide, releases that, okay? That's the gas that makes the cookies get a little thicker. That's the gas that makes cakes light and fluffy and rise up, okay? We can also use baking powder. Now the difference between baking soda and baking powder is that baking powder has a catalyst in it that causes the baking soda that's in it to give off gas. Now a catalyst, what is a catalyst? Well, the catalyst is that acidic item 
that reacts with the baking soda, causing it to do its thing. And in baking powder, it's kind of tricky because they have to mix something in there that keeps it stable while it's mixed as a powder. You don't want it reacting as a powder. All right, so they've done this, and they've even created what's called double-acting baking powder. That's a baking powder that has two catalysts in it. Now, catalyst, again, that's that item that causes it to release more carbon dioxide. So you have one catalyst that happens when you first mix the thing together. And when you mix batters and doughs together, sometimes you'll see them rise up a little bit. That's what's going on. It's that first reaction happening. Then when you put it in the oven, the heat of the oven causes the second catalyst to react and it starts giving off carbon dioxide again, thereby giving you double acting or two rises. So that's what we're doing. Now, if you're making bread, of course you use yeast. That's so all there is to it, folks. Active ingredients are leavening, the fun stuff that makes baking, well, interesting. Now, let's get into what we do with our ingredients that we add to those fantastic muffins. We need to get these ready for the muffins, and this is gonna be the first thing I do, and that way they have a little bit of time to soak. Now, all I'm gonna do is just you might be thinking, oh my God, why are you doing that to that Cointreau? Trust me, I'm not doing anything bad to that Cointreau. And anything that's left over, you can still drink and enjoy if you'd like. I bet it'll have a good flavor. So there we go. I'm just going to make sure that that's under the liquid, every bit of it, and give it time to soak. Now, I think the amount of time it takes, mmm, that tastes good. The amount of time it takes to make my muffins is going to be just about the right amount of time for this to soak. So it doesn't have to be overnight or anything weird like that. Um, just go ahead and do it this way. I'm looking forward to this. Okay, I've got everything I need here for my almonds. I don't really want whole almonds in these uh, muffins. It's just too big of a crunch all at once. I want pieces of almond and as a result, some more of that almond flavor dispersed throughout the entire muffins. So I want to take these and break them apart. And you don't need anything fancy to grind with. And if you have nothing, then you're going to be happy to learn this. This is an easy way to take care of almonds or any other nut for that matter. Just use a skillet. All right. Now, looks like I've got them all broken, fragmented. These are ready to use. It was just too simple for words, wasn't it? Okay, I've got a large bowl here and all of my dry ingredients. And all I need to do is just get these down, right down in here. Now, sometimes these ingredients will stick together, you know, or stick to the bowl a little bit. So I'll tap it a little bit and that usually knocks most of it free. So this is as simple as use a whisk and give it a simple stir, just like that. That's all that takes, all right? Nothing more than that. Now the next thing we want to do here is we're going to put in other ingredients like these nuts. I'm just going to go ahead and pour those in. And also, I'm going to be putting my cranberries in the flour before I put the liquid in here, okay? So that's a port an important step because we want the cranberries coated with a little bit of flour and that way they will remain suspended in our muffins. You want to keep them from falling to the bottom and that flour helps to hold them in place. I have my wet ingredients here, the milk, sour cream, and butter that's melted. Yeah, I know, I forgot to mention that earlier. Butter, you gotta have that butter. Now, in here I've also got an egg and I'm gonna break the yolk, beat it a little. There we go, add in the milk. Now we're gonna put in that sour cream. So let me pull this up this way. We'll get this down in here. Pardon my arm being in frame there. And my butter. Oh yes.
look at that. Beautiful, simple, and easy to do. Now, after I have put my cranberries down in my flour and mix those in, I can then mix the liquid to the flour and we are up and cooking our muffins. Now folks, sometimes you don't have muffin cups. Now don't worry, I didn't run out of muffin cups, but I can't do a good tutorial without teaching you different methods, okay? So, that's the idea here. Sometimes you don't have the paper. Don't let it deter you. Just take some butter and rub it around inside of these cups. Now you might be thinking, well, you're not hitting all of those surfaces. Yeah, I'm certainly not hitting all those surfaces. You're correct. But you know what? I'm not done either. So what I'm trying to do is just get enough down in each of these cups to do the job once it is spread around. Alrighty. This is where gloves really comes in handy. Yeah, you can wash your hands afterwards, but you know what? It sure is nice to not have to worry about it and to move right on to the next task. So if you notice, what I'm trying to do is just to make sure that it's evenly spread both on the sides as well as in that crack in the bottom, that with the groove between the bottom and the side. You want to run your finger around that and make sure that you get plenty of butter down in there, okay? Isn't that simple? Now sometimes, sometimes, not always, but sometimes, muffins will overflow their cup. Okay, oh, I know the, the horrors of it all, right? So what we want to do to prevent that is just run our hand lightly around the outside of each cup on the surface. Not going to hurt a thing. Okay. Now there's one more trick I'm going to show you when it comes to doing a pan like this. This is old world cooking, folks. It's what we used to call greasing and flouring our pans, okay? And we would do this on all kinds of baked goods. And this was, you know, I learned this before these kinds of coatings existed on pans. You bought a pan, and if you wanted it to be non-stick, you would season the pan, okay? Seasoning meaning that we would bake a layer of oil into it. Now, to line muffin cups with flour, tap it to one side. And then just gently work your way around. Okay, just like this. Alright, simple enough. And once you've gone all the way around, turn it upside down, tap it off, and boom. You're fully lined with a non-stick coating for baking. And it's the original non-stick coating, and ladies and gentlemen, I think it works better than any of the rest. Okay, so we've got the dry ingredients prepped, wet ingredients are ready to go over here. Now I've got to deal with this. First, let's just pour off. Pour that right off into this and we'll drain off the excess. So as you can see, I'm going to have something very interesting to enjoy down here. I'm going to let you know just how good that tastes. These, however, have to go down in this and get shaken in. And what we're trying to do is to get them coated with flour so that they won't sink to the bottom when I'm cooking up my muffins. Boom, there we go. There we are. I'm going to use my spatula to make sure that any of my cranberries that are clumped together are broken apart. See, oop, I think I saw a clump in there right there. Big old group of them. I'll just break those apart. Oh, heck yeah. Now, for the next part, time to get this down in there. Come up a little closer so we can look down in here. Now that's better. So, just get that all combined is all we have to do. Your batter is going to be a little bit on the 
mm, doughy side and it won't be that liquidy. Okay, and that's normal. And don't over mix this, guys. Do not over mix it. All right, folks, this is as simple as take a scoop of your muffin mix, and put it right down into that cup. I like using this scoop because it gives me this perfect sized little muffin. Fills the cup nicely, but it's not too big. Now inside of my mix here, I want to show you, it has started foaming up a little bit. And that's because that baking powder, as I mentioned, double acting, you have the first rise. And that's what's going on there right now. Folks, these are ready for the oven. And in they go. There we are. Folks, those are in the oven now. I'm going to give them 25 minutes. The oven was preheated to 375 degrees. So now it's just a matter of waiting for them to puff up and get beautiful golden brown. And when I pull them out, if I want to test them to make sure they're done, I'll simply slide a toothpick into one of them. If that toothpick comes out with batter on it, they need to go back in the oven. But if the toothpick comes out clean, they're done. That's all there is to it. Make sure you let them cool before you try to open them up, or at least cool to the touch, okay? The quantities on our ingredients were two cups of all-purpose flour, one half cup of sugar. I used regular cane sugar on that. This is three teaspoons of baking powder, one teaspoon of salt, one egg, one half cup of sour cream, one half cup of milk. And don't forget, you're gonna need that, <laughs> that butter. That was six tablespoons of butter, about a third a cup of butter, okay? If you wanna go more and do a half a cup, I'm not gonna tell you it's wrong. <laughs> and on my additives, my cranberries soaked in Cointreau, that was one cup of dried cranberries soaked out drain off the Cointreau, then put them in your mix. And the almonds started with one half cup of almonds before breaking them up and putting those into that batter. There it is, folks. It's pretty simple and a whole lot delicious. Now let's take a look at these beautiful muffins. Now, folks, we have two different ways of keeping our muffins from sticking. One is that foil liner. Works really good. The other one is this right here, just grease and flour. Now, I would like to note, though, these were side by side in the oven, same rack. Look at the difference in the browning. The browning changes a little bit when you're not using that cup, so the cup does protect it to some degree in that browning. So, there you have it, two different ways of doing it, and they both work. Don't ever be afraid to do muffins if you don't have cups. All righty. By the way, the Cointreau, uh -huh. it's a good flavor. I like it like that. Now, muffins. How did those muffins come out? Well, they're looking good on the inside. Mm-hmm. Mm they're tasting good on the inside too. <laughs> Just a little hint of the orange. And it did make those cranberries just slightly more tender too. A great way to do it. <clears throat> I like that and I think I'll be doing it again. This is a tasty recipe and folks, thank you very much for watching. If you would take a look in the description below. There's some links down there. You're gonna find out about my channel, and that's satrotter.com. Uh, excuse me, that's my uh, website. satrotter.com is my website, and there you'll find merchandise for S.A. Trotter, as well as the upcoming merchandise for Texas Cooking Today is going to be on that website. I'll be doing some t-shirts and phone covers and a variety of different little things like that. Also, some uh, prints as well. There's a lot of stuff already on there, even though I've just developed the site. So please take a look at it. You might be surprised at what you find. 
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Enjoy your muffins. If you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Subscribe, and please have a good day. Bye-bye.